It's the summer holidays, hooray! A time for most of us to have some fun. Do things we don't have time to when school's on. Perhaps go out with friends or as a family. That might be especially fun this year after all the COVID restrictions. Perhaps we might even go away on holiday. Do you think people in the Bible went on holiday? Or did fun things in the summer or enjoyed themselves in special ways? Well, I'm sure it was a bit different for most people. You couldn't fly abroad for a beach holiday, could you? Oh no, but then not many of us are doing that at the moment, are we? There was Noah and his family. They spent a long time in a boat, didn't they? Perhaps they were on a cruise. <laughs> They're popular nowadays, especially for older people. And Noah was pretty old, wasn't he? Even older than us. <laughs> well, yes. In the story, he was almost 600 years old when he built the ark. But it wasn't a holiday trip for him, was it? No, I, I, I suppose not. With the ark full of animals, it might have been a bit like a visit to the zoo for him. We used to go to the zoo in our summer holidays. What? With so many animals to feed and muck out, it must have been harder for Noah than being a zookeeper all day, every day. OK, OK. I suppose you're right. Barbecues. They must have had barbecues, surely. Well, there's certainly a story about Jesus cooking fish on a fire at the beach. Mm. And he'd gone there to meet up with his friends, the disciples. That was after his resurrection. And they'd all gone back to their fishing work. It was certainly a special get-together for them. And picnics. I love a picnic. Unless it rains, or you have a swarm of wasps. Or I remember one picnic where we were invaded by cows. It's even worse if you forget the food or some of it. <laughs> uh, there's certainly a Bible story about that. Janice and Monica are going to tell us about it later. In our family we like climbing hills, especially in the Lake District. Although sometimes the grown-ups do enjoy it more than the children do. Were there any fell walkers in the Bible? I don't think so, but Moses certainly climbed up a mountain, Mount Sinai, when God wanted to meet him and tell him the Ten Commandments. So, picnics, mountain climbs, and just getting around without cars or even bikes, Bible people spent a lot of time on their feet, whether they were on holiday or not. Louise has got something about feet for us now. Hello everyone. Now today we've been thinking about summer fun with lots of things to make and do and I'm sure you'll enjoy doing this activity that I'm going to show you now. Now for this activity you'll need uh, an empty roll of sellotape and some sellotape, uh, a pair of scissors, a piece of A4 card that we're going to fold into two, some paper straws, and some wooden skewers if you have them. Now to begin with what you need to do is draw a foot shape on your piece of card and then this needs to be cut out through both pieces of the folded card and you will end up with two feet like this. Now I've decorated the toes so you have a left foot and a right foot. Now once you've done that you take your straw and cut it in half so you have two equal pieces and then you need to fix them onto around the middle of your foot and if you can just do that with a piece of sellotape going over there and as you can see I've done that for both the feet and the straws facing inwards it's on the edge there now the next part you need to do is to get your empty roll of sellotape and take the skewer and it needs to be fixed like that. Can you see right to the edge there and put some sellotape over that. And then you need to fix another one 
on the opposite side so that it's like that. Hope you can see that in there. And then once you've fixed that in, slide your straw on and make a mark right at the edge with the pen. And then that can be snapped or cut so that it's exactly fitting in there and with your straw on top. And do the same on the opposite side so that it's directly opposite and sticking out. So it'll look like this when you're finished. There you can see I've got one going that way and this one coming towards me. And then the next job you need to do is just slide your feet on. One and two. And then if you keep watching, I'll demonstrate how this works. You might want to put it on a little slope and just see how far you can get your rolling feet to go. So this is how it works. You might even want to have a competition with one of your friends to see who can get their feet to roll the furthest. Right, bye for now. I expect we will have picnics over the summer. Oh, I hope so. Yes. Well, in the Bible, there is a story where they almost like had a big picnic with lots and lots of people. Lots and lots of people? What do you mean? Lots of people. Um, well, try and imagine if all the people in Corbridge got together to have a huge picnic. Gosh, that is a lot of people. Why so many in the Bible story? Well, it happened because the people had gone to listen to Jesus on the hillside. They arrived before breakfast time mm -hmm. and stayed till mm, after dinner time. <laughs> a long time. But they hadn't brought enough food with them. Oh, God, they, well, couldn't they have gone out to, I don't know, burger and fries or, or gone to a shop for food? Well, they were in the middle of nowhere. Oh, okay. And anyway, there were no shops or places like that at then. So what did they do? Well, Jesus turned to his friends, come with him, and asked them to get them something to eat. But his friends panicked. <laughs> Not surprised. We can't go and get any food, it's too far, they told him. And anyway, we haven't got the money. Gosh. So what happened next? Well, why not listen and find out? When Jesus asked what food there was, a little boy in the crowd looked at the loaves and fishes his mum had given him that morning. It wasn't much, but it was all he had. I have some, he said. Jesus' friends laughed. That's not nearly enough, they said, but they were wrong. Jesus knew that God would make it enough, more than enough. Bring me what you have, Jesus said. So the little boy gave Jesus his lunch. Jesus winked at him and whispered in his ear, Watch! How in the world will Jesus feed everyone with just that? Jesus' friends said, but Jesus knew the one who at the very beginning had made something out of nothing at all. How hard would that be for someone like that? Jesus took the boy's lunch, looked up to heaven and thanked his father, then gave the little lunch to his friends to hand out. And do you know, it was the strangest thing, but as they broke bits of food off, there was always more, and more, enough for everyone, second helpings, third helpings, and still there were leftovers. Jesus did many miracles like this, and it's what God has been doing from the beginning. Taking nothing and making it everything. Taking the emptiness and filling it up. So, if you have a picnic this summer, probably not of bread and fish like this little boy, you might remember the story. 
Jesus can take what little we offer to him and make it more than enough. We were talking about what people in Bible times did on their holidays. Oh yes, and a lot of people now like going to festivals. Often to listen to music and, and to do arty things or to listen to interesting people talk. Well, things a bit like that certainly happened then. Every year, Jesus and his parents, with lots of friends and neighbours, travelled to Jerusalem for a festival. I'm sure there must have been music as well as lots more to see and do. I think that's a cue for a song from Paul. If you've got an instrument you could play, or a drum or pan you could hit, why not join in? Or you can sing along too. Praise him on the trumpet, the soldier and harp. Praise him on the timbrel and the dance. Praise him with stringed instruments too. Praise him on the loud cymbals, praise him on the loud cymbals, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, hallelujah, praise the Lord, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise Him on the trumpet, soldier and harp, praise Him on the timbrel and the dance, praise Him with stringed instruments too. Praise Him on the loud cymbals, praise Him on the loud cymbals, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So we pray together. Let us say thank you to God for all the fun that we have during the summer. Thank you for the time we spend with our friends and family. Thank you for being able to go to the beach and have fun. Thank you for time spent together sharing picnics and meals. Thank you for visiting the library and reading books. For the opportunity of being creative. For being able to explore and to have time together doing various sports. You may like now to spend a few minutes saying thank you to God for the things that you enjoy during the summer. Lord God, thank you for fun, friendship and holidays. Amen. Hello again everyone. We hope you've enjoyed July's Messy Church Online and it's time to say goodbye now and we hope you all have a really good summer holiday wherever you go and whatever you do. But take care. Bye. Oh, and if you would like to make this robotic hand 
download the activity pack from our church website. Bye everyone! Bye!